Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I'll be making a 6x6 card with this CC Design uh, 9 window die and the Craft and Kimmy stamps pandemonium. Now this stamp set is amazing because you can see there you get so many different pandas. They are super adorable, roughly, you know, um, an inch and a half or so tall, an inch to an inch and a half or so, and uh, that makes them really, pandas already are super easy to color because you just need a few shades of gray, but these being um, a little bit smaller, they take no time to color, and that's me, um, somebody who colors very slowly. So what I've already done in advance is I stamped and colored, I think, just about all of the pandas. The only one I didn't uh, color up was, you can see it in the bottom leftmost of the stamp set. It's the one with sort of the baby and the mama panda. And otherwise, I, I stamped up, and some of the some of them I stamped up twice. Um, but what I'll be doing is creating a shaker card with this um, 9x9 window frame here. And the nice thing about the size of these pandas, not only is it easy to color them up, but um, because they are, they're not tiny, but they're not huge either. So you can actually fit quite a few on a single card, which is kind of nice, uh, especially on a six by six card, which um, has a, a bit more real estate than the standard USA two size card that I normally make. Now with this, um, with this nine window grid here, I will, um, I put down double sided adhesive tape basically over the entire frame because I want this acetate to be well stuck down. So this is my, um, this is my thin acetate. It's not construction weight. It's, um, it's just my, my regular, um, kind of, a little bit on the flimsy side, but that's perfectly okay for shaker cards. And I want to make sure that I'm burnishing uh, this down really well. And with acetate and vellum, you can really tell the difference that burnishing makes because you can almost see um, that area go where you have adhesive go a bit more clear when you give it an, a really good burnish. Now with um, with this 9x9 nine nine window here, you've got a lot of different options because you could, um, in terms of shakers, uh, shaker components, you could make um, the whole thing just one big shaker window. And basically all you would need to do is put foam strips around um, basically the four uh, edges of this panel. But what I wanted, if you do it that way and there's just the one big shaker window, then all of your shaker fill will go to the bottom most row when the card is held upright. And I sort of wanted some of the shaker fill to be visible in, um, in all of those little uh, windows, even when the card is held upright. And I felt like that would make it look a little bit more um, interesting and kind of makes it almost seem like those shaker bits are um, kind of just floating as well. And so if you want to do that, then what you want to do is wherever you want a, um, a shaker well, you want to make sure that you completely enclose it in uh, foam. So I'm surrounding each of these nine window openings with um, some foam strips here. And I, I cut these down to um, just, I tried to aim to, to cut it just um, a little bit more narrow than uh, the window frame itself. But you, what you want to make sure of is that it's a nice sort of snug fit so that you don't leave any gaps in your foam where your shaker bits might escape out of the window. So, so that's why you basically see this entire back panel here filled, uh, lined with foam. And what I'm doing here is quickly brushing on some, I use baby powder, but you can use any form of anti-static powder that just removes, um, any tackiness 
that uh, from the adhesive um, that might have come through as I was cutting these foam strips. And then I'm gonna fill each of these nine windows with some shaker fill. I went, I think at this time I went a little bit too light-handed, surprisingly. Normally I overfill, but um, I was being a little bit maybe too cautious to, to not overfill. And I've got a little bit of a mix here. I've got some of um, my seed beads here, and then I've got some confetti that is iridescent. So that's not going to add color, but it'll add a little bit of that iridescent shine. And then I've got another piece of acetate here that I'm going to um, add to the back of this and completely encase or enclose my uh, shaker window. And if you've seen me make shakers before on my channel, you know this is how I prefer to create my shakers so that they have um, adhesive on the front and the back and it's completely enclosed um, in a separate unit that I can then take to my card base and, and line it up however I need on my card base. Even if, when it's just one big shaker window, I find, a, I find it really difficult to do the method where you put your shaker fill on your card base and then you line up your um, shaker window on top. Um, that's just for me, so much more challenging, and I'd rather, I know it's an extra piece of um, acetate, but I'd rather just use that extra piece of acetate um, and, and make it easier on myself when it comes to actually lining up the shaker unit. Plus, with um, this method of creating multiple uh, shaker windows, uh, I think you pretty much have to do it this way because it's gonna be really hard to line up um, shaker fill uh, in just those nine individual locations. But the nice thing about making um, multiple shaker windows is if you wanted to fill each of those windows with a different color of shaker fill, you could totally do that and that would look really, really neat. And you could, um, there's nothing to say that you have to make nine individual windows. You can combine some of the, the windows in, in any sort of um, pattern and um, and then create you know your shaker windows that way too. So lots of different options for um, a frame die like this to just create different looks. So now that I've got this uh, shaker unit on uh, attached to my card base, I can go ahead and just focus on um, getting my pandas and the sentiment all. Um, kind of composed and, and lined up on my card. I am cutting a couple of strips of just scrap paper just to um, try to even up the um, the back of the sentiment a little bit since it's going over top of a frame. It's not perfect, but um, because there's the, the vertical uh, slat of the <laughs> window frame as well, but this will hopefully help to level it off a little bit. And um, and again, I for some of the pandas, I do have, um, I did double, I did stamp twice, and, and so I have multiples of them. But I'm trying to use um, some of my foam, this is my low profile foam, to try to get um, these pandas as level with the top of um, the, the grid, the window, and because some of this panda is hanging off the edge of the window frame, I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of my Kalau 3D glue gel underneath. And what's great about the 3D glue gel is that it's, um, you can just squeeze out a blob of it. <laughs> you don't have to worry about getting the perfect thickness of foam to to level something, especially if, if um, if there's multiple levels of uh, different mats and layers underneath there. Um, and having this little syringe makes it really easy to just squeeze it out where where you need. Um, I was asked once by a viewer uh, where I got it and, and uh, where I got the syringe. So I buy the Kalau 3D glue gel from uh, one of two places. I've ordered it from Craft Stash. Um, and I've ordered it from Crafter's Companion before. There are, it's sold 
in uh, two different uh, configurations. So you can either buy the tube of glue gel by itself, or you can buy it as a kit that comes with the syringe and a couple of other tools that help you to um, fill the syringe and squeeze, you know, every last bit of that glue gel out of the tube. But really what I find is that you only really need one syringe. So you only need to really buy the kit once because the you can just keep on refilling the same syringe once you're done using it. So there are all my little pandas and um, love how this card turned out. I like that it's a really simple color palette and I love pandas in general and these ones are super, super cute. I hope you enjoyed this card. I'll leave links to everything in the description box below. If you did like it, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you want to catch new videos as I publish them, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing the notification bell. Thanks so much. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye!